Ladies and gentlemen, how you all doing? This is Con Ulrich. And I'm Rang Roo. Hello, hello, hello. And folks, it's Tuesday, which means it's replay day for the SD2 Season 5 League. Today, outside the village of Sabuchsen, who do we have here, Rang? On left-hand side, in blue, we have JKW playing the 5th Panzer Division with a Vanguard income. On the right hand side in red, we have Grey Fox playing third guard mechanized, also rear a Vanguard income. Alright, so this is a Division 1 yep. kind of action over here. Uh, as you can kind of see from both of the decks, nothing super surprising here. Just 5th Panzer being 5th Panzer and a third guards being third guards. I guess the only thing I probably would call out is I'm surprised to see SU-76s over here in Phase A. Yeah, I don't yeah. Know why. That, 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 that is a little weird to me. I don't know why. Yeah, like good cheap fire support. They're, they're nice to have. But yeah, early on we got Panda Strikes. Let's so get into the town first. Actually trying to get the Ogman Shikis, but do not get the hit on those rather slick motorbikes here. One of them's going to unload, and the second one's just going to unload right next to a Panda Strike, which is not ideal for the Panda Strike, I believe. And yet, at the same time, he's able to kind of fight them off. So I am surprised oh, wow. a little bit there. Same here. And here comes the cavalry of Bunster of Superior is going to be rusting into the town. And this is a very interesting map just due to how this town is, like, located, so to speak. Mm -hmm. Like, it is a very good... We don't see this map all that often, but it's a very interesting fight. This town, you got, like, a good amount of cover to really push through. I think you can get some really cool infantry engagements here. And even though I'd say most maps, like, a central town position is very important... I think you can get a ray in this map just pushing flanks if you so desire. But I, I haven't really seen this map being played well often, so yeah, it could be proven wrong. But it's going pretty well here so far for Grey Fox. He's pushing them pretty hard with the Emchers and Sapiris. It certainly seems to be the case. Now, we are seeing those P4Js, of course, basically the recon Panzer over here, doing decently well until, of course, if he gets <laughs> smacked in the turret. Yeah. Um, but the initial kind of thrust here was not quite as energetic as I might have expected from the third guard. Yeah, he didn't manage to get fully into the town. I think the Panzer Strike slowed him down a wee bit in the Panzer Force as well. But he is getting a foothold at least, which is better than nothing for now. He still has the armor advantage, two Shermans, veteran shield over a one star fetid P4. In a, in a town fight, I'd really give it to the Shermans, but JKW is bringing in the heavy reinforcements, two Panzer four H's and three Marder threes, which is very fitting. Indeed. Indeed. But at the same time, let's not discount the fact that there is another reinforcement column coming the other direction as well. Four squads of infantry, two MCHAs, and looks like a Partizani MP42, just because, you know, apparently he was bored. Yeah. Um, and the Valentine tank over here has finally ambled up to the front lines after his initial, <laughs> let's say, uh, trooping on in. Now, the fight yeah, between I... P4 and, and MTS is going to probably come out here just in one particular fashion, and that's exactly the fashion I expected. You were going to say, sir? Yeah, I'm quite surprised where Valentine is positioned, because it is pretty dangerous in that town fight, yeah. I mean, it's not the best CQC. It's definitely more of a, you know, better on the flanks down south or up north as... You can just use it as a defensive pillbox. Speaking of flanks, far down south we have some Partisanis trying to push through an open field, but there's some rather unhappy Germans who really didn't do that. Yeah, and and even though it's just an SDK I've said, and indeed there's an FDK I've said over here in the you know in the front forests, I can't help but wonder what he was thinking trying to push across the open territory. Those, that's one of those kind of places that, although the vehicles are not strong in the forest, you got to have some kind of fire support. Yeah, I think he's just probing it to see if there was anything down there. And due to the death of all his partisans, I think he got his answer. You know, we're going to probe something, dude. Buy dinner first. Uh, <laughs> Martyrs, in the meantime, finding their, their range rather oh, quickly. Wow. Taking a one M shot. And again, these guys, these are made for these long... Ooh, yep, and there we go. And that's why you don't bring an M show when there's multiple, multiple tank destroyers around. Yeah, this has always been the fun dynamic between like pan, like the Pack 40 style German vehicles and then the Allied vehicles. Uh, you know, longer range as German guns do a lot of damage, but if your Shermans are getting close, those murders and Panzer Fours do not have a good time due to the stabilizers. And with how the martyrs are set up right now, if he can just keep his Shermans at long range, he should be able to eventually, you know, 
secure the town by really uh, cutting off any armored support. Yeah, I was going to say that famous whole, you know, one word response of if. And you see already these guards getting pounded, and jeez, all of those vehicles here. It is so strange to see the PTRDs not just completely crush face. Uh, yeah. Left down below, by the way, straight support is on the MC42. There is a Dushka carrier, uh, which isn't that basically. Yeah, it's a Bren carrier. Yeah, it's a Bren carrier, but they decide to put a Dushka on top. Bizarrely enough, I mean, they still have a Bren in there in the first place. I know. Uh, SDK have said it's right next to some guards down below. Jeez, there's the, just donations consistently here. It's like a food bank, and now it looks like the SDK have said it's bitten up more than it can chew. Yeah, yeah I'd, I'd, be, I'd be breaking out of here too, and unfortunately, he, he gets sent with a bit of an upset stomach, uh, stomach there. Indeed, he does. And now yeah, Sherman should be able to re secure himself inside. He's definitely going to need a little bit more infantry to probe ahead. Probably going to have a very hard time finding the Pantagrund here and uh, set troopers which are coming in, but yeah, he's going to be getting some of the infantry. Indeed, some of it. Um, meantime, kind of fascinated. What the heck is this? Oh, the Valentine is getting engaged by the 88. Yeah, it's very interesting calling getting the 88 so early. It's actually a good calling because you can use it to ward off airplanes effectively. Also, just using it as anti tank. And it isn't a, it's in a good spot. It has good coverage over this central southern area here. It is taking quite a bit of fire. Yes, I was going to say that that MG42 though is kind of carving up something fierce, and yeah. I I would be backing up here. That's a heavy investment. Yeah, you don't want to really be losing that, especially so early on. Nope. Where's he getting shot at? Oh yeah, I think it's by the MG42 because yep. they have 1.5 kilometer range. Dude, hey, they, <laughs> they they use those for like quasi artillery attacks, beaten ground. Like I can make a lot of sense there. There we go, and the flag does go down there. Very good position to have the MG42 knocking out a very expensive unit. Now, not quite the same level of immediate success, but we are seeing it's a 45 mil who's just engaging a lot of this 5th Panzer armor right along the center line here. Oh, yeah. Hasn't managed to kill more than a half track, and he won't be killing anything else as he does go down. Yeah, it's a pretty good securing from the town here from JKW. As with the Marders flanking around the northern side, he's managed to cut off a lot of the armored reinforcements and Grey Fox's infantry is slowly getting pushed out. But as you can see, JK is really using his armored forces to try and make this happen because his A phase infantry is pretty pathetic. It's mm -hmm. it's mainly just us as trooping. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. yeah. But fifth panzer, you kind of got to do that. You don't really have a lot of infantry slots. Well, you can definitely see it as well. I mean, he's, he is planning for some manner of late game. Now, will we get there? Well, it's a different deal altogether. But at least he, it, there's a thought there for it. Yep, yep. But Grey Fox still has a sliver of the town, the southern side, to be exact. I mean, the Redevkos and Partisanis and Guards were all pretty damn good units. And, yeah, it's, it's going to be hard to fight him in a pure infantry fight. JK is really going to need more of the armored support to try and make his work. And Grey Fox is bringing in a rather sneaky Zis 2 here, kind of be getting it, you know, fairly close. Very dangerous spot for such long range AT gun, but hey, at closer range it can penetrate even more. The interesting thing is he's not going to be able to get a lot of sight on these, though. Very, very defensively placed. I, I, I kind of get, like, he probably should move a little bit further out, maybe cover that road. He doesn't want to put it on the arterial, that's fine, but be more, slightly more aggressive in my mind. Yeah, speaking of aggression, JK's really taking the fight up north here. He's actually pushing out of the town and trying to get into this little, like, village strip here. The parts down the MGs are going to be stopping him for now, but they are going to go down just due to overwhelming firepower. And Grey Fox bringing in some of those cheap and quite lovely SU-76s to try and stem the tide. Well, Stepanovich over here has gotten himself uh, a crew kill, so he hasn't gotten the official death. But he's been able to take out the crew for one of those martyrs. Of course, they give their life up for the Wehrmacht over here. Um, quick look over here down to the south just to kind of see how things are continuing to develop. And I think, I feel like this, this air strafing here is probably the only thing keeping things even moderately under control. Yeah, just trying to get a few pins on those guard DPs at least, but... Yeah, the Sherman makes in with a pretty good infantry, a Grey Fox has. 
This southern side is definitely like his terrain, so to speak. Well, he's got to win something. Right now it's 14-10. It was 15-9 seconds ago, and indeed, Clock Wolf coming in. Yep, looking for those guards. If you can stress out the guards, you know, that this is a save the cheerleader, save the world kind of situation. Yeah. Bear down south, you can only really grab one, two flags, really. Here, it's not a really wealthy area in terms of objectives. So, he, he's going to make pretty good progress, I think, down south, but he's still going to need to try and stem this bleed in the center, because that's really the heart of the map here, just due to all the bloody flags which are nearby. Well, and right now, some of this m is going, this is why you actually take these this bottom flank. You see where he's, he's coming on up here, he's going to be able to slowly start to control more and more of this battle space. There's two flags over here in the center. He can go up another, call it 150 meters from where his, his intended plan is. Um, yeah, at that point he controls another kind of reinforcement point kind of coming in. It's a really vital area, it just it, it, it takes that extra second, that extra step of effort to, to make it really, really vital. I really like how that carrier just couldn't half track and just hanging out, yeah? The carrier can't shoot because he's out of 50 car ammunition, so I think he's waiting for his big brother, aka the sermon, to, you know, show him the true meaning of firepower. I'm, I'm apparently quite turned around. I'm looking for a, a half track. Oh, it's uh, oh, normal. There we yeah. Go. Wow, he's hiding underneath the he's seen... KFZ, yeah. Yeah, it's just. <laughs> They're probably just staring some cigarettes and, like, hey. What's oh, a Christmas a terrible truce? Terrible roar, eh? <laughs> Christmas truce. Yeah. Um, I mean, communists celebrate Christmas, right? Uh, and there's, of course, the those are getting hammered and get taken out. Actually, he stressed out the SDK of Z. Oh. Which I think I probably a little, I would probably wet myself a little bit there too, all things considered. Yeah. Yeah, indeed, indeed. It's just 76, so they're not engaging. Oh, they're okay. I was just saying, they didn't make a lot of sense they were engaging the south. Yeah, shooting up north here, just trying to get some HE on the SR to troop in. Yeah, this northern push is still going pretty good for JK. He definitely needs to try to get some infantry into that strip mall, so to speak, but you know, with all the firepower, it's going to be hard, and he doesn't have great infantry. You know, he does have good anti-tank positions around this forest area. It's a pretty easily defensible area to shoot all the medium and heavy forest scattered about. Mm. And he got good line of sight on the road to trail. Like, his pack 40 here is going to try and get a snipe or two. You know, I'm a little surprised by how meager the Phase B is over here for JKW. I mean, if you look at the overall kind of cards that he's, you know, potentially bringing in, we're only really seeing two tank tabs. We see two infantry tabs, and we see a couple of really the anti-tank. He's not bringing in a whole lot of potential. No, not really. I see he's quite heavy C phase with the Panzer IV, the Tiger, the Panzer Grenadier card. Yeah, he's pretty meager. I'm actually quite surprised I haven't seen any heavy tanks so far. He's, that's, he's been just, you know, completely dead set on using the Panzer IVs and Martyrs. And frankly, that's fine. It's been working quite well for him, really. He's been getting good trades in these tank engagements. Certainly true. Now, we did just see a lag come in. Uh, so, there's a Pack 40 and a Martyr 3 that both gotten taken out in that northern forest. You can see the MG42 is falling back. So expect to see more of a 50-50 being held here on the line. Um, wait a second. Wow, Grey Fox is not that much in deep phase. I mean, he's got a buttload of Valentine, so I'm, I'm happy to hear that he's so beloved. But uh, not quite as overloaded as I would expect. I, I find myself expecting that there'd be a lot more phase B when we have Vanguard incomes here. Yeah, same, but same. But I think they just get just enough to last through phase B and then they get the standard C phase stuff just in case the game does go longer in 30 minutes, which is always a possibility. But it, it does make sense. Like phase A and phase C are probably two of the most important phases in Steel Division 2. Phase B is just that interlude where you just need to buy just enough stuff for a 10 minute interval, really. Because so, then V says hits, and you can just get much more availability per activation point. Two things. Um, there are two pack tracks in the middle, actually with one pack track in the middle, that was instrumental in shutting down that, the SU-76 push. And, you know, I can't help but agree with you. I mean, you're absolutely right. 
B, A, and B are two of the most important phases. I'd actually I'd probably add a third one there, probably phase C. So I'd say, you know, three most important phases of the game. So. <laughs> They're all three phases, Khan. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. Just uh, taking the yeah. piss out of you for a yeah. second. Yep. Um, actually, you know what? You can have uh, the piss. I'm not going to take it from you. Oh, uh, okay. Thank you. I, I could use my Jurati. I need to <laughs> try and uncover some spies after this match. This, this turned really strange very quickly. Moving back into the game itself. Uh, the town continues to be rather hard fought over, but it, it's not a fair fight consistently. I mean, we have these DPs, which are taking out the occasional half track, so I'm not going to go and steal that from them. But it's not infantry engaging infantry, it's vehicles just kind of pounding at vehicles. Yeah, it's really just coming down to a tank fight here, which is quite interesting. I mean, really, like I said, JK really only has infantry uh, tanks to effectively contest the town right now. Can I also just say I love this counterpunch that's potentially coming into this, the northern piece here. Oh. Except I have to be a little concerned about some of the sight lines. This pack 40 is not going to get a... Um, what the heck just happened? Um... If he can get up there in time, he might be able to turn this into just oil and blood and mud. Yeah, I do like his cry a lot, though, because that northern flank is pretty sparse. It's just an Ursatch troop and then some support weaponry backing him up, and... Yeah, goddamn, these fucker rules have just been constantly on the map, just strafing. We haven't that, seen, that, like, that as much... 40, yeah. gonna get some shots. That's oh, there we go. And then the flak 88 is going to join in the action. And this and this is what I'm concerned about, but this is a beautiful, beautiful... I'm not sure he's, if he knew this was coming, but this is still going to be more than enough to kind of keep them contested. They're not, they're not going yeah. to cross the field. Yeah, they've been forced to unload early, so he's really not going to make up push anytime soon. And that will give JKW to get some reinforcements in a, a short time. Indeed he shall. Down south is definitely, like, crying to down. Uh, JK still holding that one flag down south, which is really all he needs to do. He could potentially try and counter push the far southern run, but... Well, yeah, it is possible, but I don't see him really doing that. We do have this great, nasty little tank blob here in the southern central position, trying to engage some half-tracks. I feel like the SU-85 goes down, that entire push is still born. I might yeah. be wrong. I might be wrong, but I feel like that's still born. If that, if that thing dies, that's down. Yeah, um, yeah, he has like a bit of a chance with Valentine's, but yeah, SU-85 is definitely the the high firepower in that fight. But we do have Panzer 4s and Pack 40s and a Black 88 ready to shoot him. Oh, absolutely. Uh, town fight heats back up again. Two more guard squads being moved on in there, and I think this might be a very important fight. I mean, as the SKF said, moving in for two fifty mark nines. Those guys are guard are like guard killers. They really are. Yeah, definitely the type of vehicles they want in a town fight. It's good auto cannons to completely pin down enemy infantry. It's again, there's Panzer Grenadiers in there now. So yeah, it's going to be a pretty effective counter person securing that flag will bring it back to a 13 11. I thought it would have been a little higher than that. Maybe I'm... Where the heck is... Oh, so we're just getting a little bit of ground to gain that one of the northern flags back. Yeah. Uh, and Granny Fox, I think, is running out of B-phase material because he's bringing three MGs, and I don't think he's just, like, has, like, a machine gun and battalion that he desperately needs to bring into the front lines. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And he's, he's really not looking good right now. Just losing that position in the center is really going to screw him over. Because if you look on exactly. his side of the map, like, the entry range to the town is pretty open. You know, you slap a few pack 40s and martyrs in the nearby forest, and you're not going to re-enter in that town anytime soon. Oh, absolutely not. I think that's what these pants are going to do, so brought in slowly to do move out this last guard squad, and I think at that point you see the SDK FZ 259s move on up. Um, mm -hmm. I was wrong, the machine gun battalions are firing in at that poor pack 40. Dude, retreat. There we go, it's back it away. There we go. Yep, they're gonna bugger off. They're gonna be taking some fire from the flag KT8, but definitely a rough raw trade here. I feel like Grey Force should make a pretty effective push up north. But he should be, probably be his next best bet once he gets kicked out of the town. It seems like it's what he's doing, as he is getting those SU-76s. 
there's a minor bit of a missed opportunity here. I feel like there should have been some art arty or something like that. That would be mm -hmm. to kind of interdict over here from JKW's side. I mean, especially as the quiet the, the bottom is quieted down quite so much. I get the feeling that there really should be some artillery to break up the attacks before they kind of you know, hit home. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, I'm gonna go on some. Sorry, I was noticing the fuck oh, coming on one side and, and, and again coming in and get these, get these guards down to the middle. So. Pretty yeah. damn effective. And then our lag free just gets stressed out before it can even get to its target, so that's pretty damn effective on the Flak 88. The SU 76s are gonna be brought in. I wonder how they'll do. I mean, that Flak 88 is really going to be the, the main issue for them. And also just trying to get some more infantry just green. Like, JK has a decent defensive position up north, even though he's a bit scarce. Yeah, I mean, but, but scarce or not, I mean, that, that's that's kind of the name of the game when you're trying to go from that phase B to phase C. And it is phase C now, so I'm wondering, is that going to be a Tiger coming? No, we're getting more pack 40, so. It's, pack yeah, it's just crazy. We haven't seen any heavy tanks from JKW, and he's playing the heavy tank division. It's just all Panzer fours. Which is really, really strange to see, because, you know, like, P4s, you know what Dive said about them, or you know what Ryan has said about them. So it, it's really surprising to see such a commitment to them. Yeah. I mean, they, they can work, and, and they, they can actually work, you just need to get them in two-star veterancy. And that's what we see for most of them, they are being brought out in that two-star veterancy. But yeah, usually just, I, I guess the counterpoint for not getting a heavy tank is that this map isn't super beneficial to them. It's pretty close quarters, so it, it, it's more likely to get blown up at a uh, close range firefight. SU-85 has been bailed out. Oh yeah. Even if the martyr dies, he's done exactly what he needs to do. No, he's, yeah. he's, he's gotten one of them. He's got the other one as well? He's got the other one as well. Yep. <laughs> Dude, he, he... That was pretty rough, Rob. Exactly. He traded himself so effectively there. What was that? Jeez. Yeah, 50 points that, for, for 120? That's great. Yeah. I wonder if that uh, bailed out S35 will get recruited. Get I, supply I'm truck in. I'm not seeing that now. Oh, yeah, he doesn't even have a supply truck in his deck. I that's just exactly realized why. that. <laughs> yeah. I to see that. <laughs> it's like, oh, he has no chance in hell. That's quite a ballsy move, not taking any supply truck. But I understand, you know... We not taking any in A phase, but like, you know, he's gonna be losing out on refixing that tank, or if his stuff runs out of ammunition, and he can't resupply it. But I guess the best option is just make sure it dies or it runs out of ammo, really. Yeah, and that's kind of what the comment I was going to make is: we 88 is starting to engage the SU-76 is like crazy, so the SU-76 is the the blob will probably end up killing him. Yeah. But he might get just enough to give me one or two kills. That's one. Okay, force a fallback. Damn. That's, that's almost as good. I flak 88. Okay, there we go. He gets pinned down finally. This is like a good use of what you use these SU 76 bobs for. Like good cheap tank pushes, even though they're not technically tank. I mean, in, in tank fights, you do pretty terrible, but again, soft targets are pretty damn nice. So, if there's pack 40 in a ambush position, they're gonna have a bad time. Yeah, they're gonna have a bad time for a moment, but now they can just go and, and death star it to death, you know. Or <laughs> yeah. just focus fire. I'm not sure I really agree with their decision to go to the, the peak grounds, unless I was just a. Uh, yeah, I think you didn't decision. see the pack 40, yeah. It was like slightly pulled back, and here we go. Now he's in a better position to try to get some kills if the pack 40 can actually hit anything. He's got one already. He actually got, I think he's got two or three already. Oh, so okay, there goes right the second there. one. Now, one thing that's kind of silly do, do bailout kills actually get scored? I to... don't believe so. That is a little bit unfortunate. Yeah, especially in this case because he can't, he has no possibility of. You know, resupplying them. Oh look, a 37 millimeter. That would have been nice 25 minutes ago. Sorry, Fuck Wolf coming in with his yep. with another ground pounding run. And I need to take one out. Oh. I was expecting one dead SU, yeah, but I guess that won't be happening today. Well, technically one of them has already been dead, but he's just he's just mostly dead. He's just yeah, it's like half dead. 
Well, it means at that point we go see Miracle Max to make him mostly dead to slightly alive. But uh, that's a <laughs> One Princess Bride joke that I will never make again, because apparently it did not land with my Canadian counterpart. Nope, um, I, I have not actually seen the movie, Khan. Oh my god, it's also a book, too, for that matter. Yeesh. Oh, man. Uh, that's okay. I, I love you anyway. I know. Re Recon will be perfect. It's... That's true. That's true. But then, you know, if we were all be perfect, we'd be Canadian. <laughs> so, 172 off mapping called in over here. And yes, some artillery. I think it's a little bit belated. But hey, you know what? That's, it's better than nothing. And we see a tap out before there could be any kind of completion. So now at that point, I'm just being edged and not getting yeah. any kind of artillery strike. I know, we wanted the big kabooms, but yeah. that won't be happening today, guys. We're, we're very sorry. There's one m has got himself a P4 and a couple of ground kills. There's an SU-76 who's got three half-tracks. Yeah, that's pretty much the issue, I think, is that a lot of the kills that happened, except for one guard, one or two guard squads, everything didn't really trade up. It just kind of went... and just kind of fell out. Yeah, I, I definitely felt like a map... map map match if i can say the words correctly today where it really felt yeah yeah pretty much just came down to affect trading between both players and jkw with his armor managed to trade effectively with the panzer fours and martyrs and the pack gun position now the funny thing for me too is if you look at the fuck wolves the fuck wolves over here the 190s have gotten like a baker's wow. dozen of kills between them so they did really good for just strafing that's Really good. Uh, wow. Black 88s as well. So uh, Dinkle over here uh, got himself a fair bit of kills. That's at one, two, three, four, five, five ground kills for them vehicles. It paid himself off. Flack down yeah. here. Two. He's got five ground kills. Three of them vehicles. He paid himself off. I mean, for the most part here, anything that died at least took something with him. Yeah. Or her. Or her. Maybe somebody snuck in somehow. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> Um, but regardless, solid match. I was not really expecting a third to get rocked on its heels so much. I think maybe a little bit more of a vicious attack early on might have definitely helped them. Yeah, Grey Fox was definitely, like, pushing hard. He was trying to push north, center, and south, but he just could not really break through anywhere, and that was just not being able to trade efficiently. I also I also really like that map. I think it's a pretty good map with the flag positioning, and there's also just enough cover and maneuver where it's not just like big open field where you just can't move. Mm -hmm. So yeah, now I, I wish we see that map more often because it's it's a, it's one of the few good maps in this game. That's fair. That is certainly fair. But hey, that's you know the way it's got to be sometimes, right? Yeah. Okay. Any final thoughts there, sir? Uh, none today. Well, in that case, folks, be sure to come back over here on Thursday. And until Thursday, I'm Connell Work. Hi, Mangaroo. Take it easy.